Have you been searching for a simple tool that will help you evaluate an animal's potential? Well, look no further. The American Jersey Cattle Association has developed an animal pedigree which allows you to do just that. You can find any genetic or phenotypic information regarding an individual in that one document. Today we're going to teach you about each area of information. Some may be just a quick overview with future video explanations or interactive tools to come. The information found on this pedigree can be used to make management decisions for your herd. It can assist with determining which animals would be valuable additions to your herd, as well as which ones may not fit your breeding philosophies and farm goals. Good morning, this is Greg Lavin, Manager of Jersey Marketing Service, and today we're going to discuss uh, how to read a U.S. Jersey pedigree, uh, whether it's out of sale or when you get them in, in the mail when, after you've registered your calves. The first section we're going to cover looks at the basic identification information of an animal. Today we are going to be evaluating a female. Some aspects of the male pedigree do differ from a female's. Working down the pedigree, in the top left corner, the first items you see on the top are the sex of the animal and the DHI herd number. On the next line, the bold print is the animal's name. Most commonly, the name starts with the breeder's prefix, which in this case is Sunwest. Many animals also have their sire listed in their registered name, as well as a name or number that specifies them as a unique individual within their herd. Prefix and suffixes designate registry status if the animal is something other than herd register, also known as HR. HR is seven or more generations of AJCA recorded ancestry with no ancestor of another breed. The prefix JX indicates that the Jersey has one or more ancestors of another breed within six generations. The prefix UR is assigned when an animal has permanent identification but does not meet AJCA registry requirements. The generation count suffix indicates that the animal's pedigree includes either an unknown animal or an animal of another breed. The number between the brackets indicates generations of AJCA recorded ancestry from zero to six. Other suffixes most commonly used are P for polled, PP, tested homozygous polled, ET for embryo transfer, ETS, split embryo, and ETN, nuclear transfer or cloning. In the third line, the first number listed is, is the registration number of the animal. This may be the 840 RFID tag or a customized number if you use tattoos rather than jersey tags. The following number indicates whether the animal has been genotyped as well as the density of the test chip. For this animal, it was an 8K chip. GI indicates that the genotype was imputed from progeny. In GA, the genomic data comes from genotyped ancestors. Next is the breed-based representation. This is the genomic estimate of the animal's relationship to the Jersey Breed Reference Group. BBR is printed only for genotyped animals. A BBR of 94 or greater is reported as 100, but lower than 94 is reported as calculated. The final number in that third line is the official status for Jersey Haplotype 1, based on a genotype of 6K or higher density. F designates the status as free, C signifies the animal as a carrier. On the next lines are the animal's birthday and if she is lactating. The DHI processing center control number, also visible are the animal's permanent identification which is either a tattoo, American ID tag, and or an electronic ID. The next item varies between animals. For heifers, the percentile, P level, of the parent average, PA, or genomic PTA for Jersey Performance Index is visible. P level indicates how the heifer ranks compared to other heifers born in the same year. When PA JPI is not available, the P level is based upon PA protein. The expected future inbreeding, or EFI, or if genomic tested, genomic estimate of future inbreeding, GFI, estimates future progeny inbreeding. This is structured based on the animal being mated randomly to the current population. 
The next section on the pedigree breaks down the animal's either parent average estimate or lists the data found through genomic testing. The first item listed on this pedigree is applicable to cows only. It is predicted producing ability, or PPA, in yield deviation, YD, for milk, fat, and protein. PPA predicts future production. YD is the weighted average of lactation yield minus selected management and environmental factors expressed relative to the breed base. The rest of the information listed in this section will be explained further in a future video. This section is the CDCB predicted transmitting ability, which is based on either traditional or genomic evaluations, depending if the animal is genomic tested. Genotype animals are evaluated on a separate single S breed basis or a multiple M breed blended basis depending on genetic makeup. S designations are for BBRs greater than or equal to 90 and M is a result of BBRs less than 90. Young animals without their own performance information or genomic test information have a parent average PA that is calculated for milk, fat, protein, net merit indexes, type, and JPI. PA is the sum of half the sire's PTA and half the dam's PTA. The next section you see highlights the performance of the animal. The first section is the animal's lactation records. The information listed in this area by order is age of calving, days milked, times milk per day, actual pounds of milk, percent fat, actual pounds of fat, percent protein, actual pounds of protein, cheese yield, and data collection rating, or DCR. The 305-day 2x mature equivalent lactation average for records of at least 180 days in length is also printed. The cow's type evaluation data is also listed in addition to the cow's age and final score. The final score breakdowns are excellent for 90 and above, very good for 80 to 89, desirable for 70 to 79, acceptable for 60 to 69, and poor 50 to 59. Scores for breakdown traits from the most recent appraisal are listed. Stature, strength, dairy form, rump angle, rump width, rear leg set, foot angle, fore udder, rear udder height, rear udder width, udder cleft, other depth, teat placement, teat length, rear teat placement rear view, and rear teat placement side view. Moving to the animal's parentage information. The first listed is the sire's information. Included with this is his registration number and when applicable, genotype, JH1 status, sire, program, and NAAB code. Then also listed are a CDCB genetic evaluations and AJCA genetic evaluations. The dam's registration number, genotype and haplotype status when applicable, permanent ID, lactation records, production summary, and genetic evaluations are also given, along with their type evaluation breakdowns. In addition to the animal's sire and dam information, the paternal and maternal sire and dams are listed on the pedigree. In the top right corner, the information the AJCA has recorded for recorded owner and breeder of the animal. The breeder of this animal is defined as the recorded owner of the dam at conception of the animal. Females will have a list of their total registered progeny on the page. The information will include the registration number, sex, permanent identification, and genotype status if applicable, and JPI slash GJPI for the eight youngest progeny. While there's a lot of information to understand and digest on each animal's pedigree, the information is useful to different dairy enthusiasts. This helps breeders make mating decisions, the sire analysts discover the elite animals, and producers make strategic decisions for their dairy. If you have any questions regarding a section of the Jersey pedigree, please contact the AJCA NAJ office at 614-861-3636 or email at info at usjersey.com.